This is the second tutorial in a three tutorial series on trigger animations in PowerPoint 2013. In the previous tutorial we have learned about trigger animations and some useful tools when working with trigger animations. And in this tutorial we will learn about trigger animations of the first type. And that's when you click on one object and that triggers some kind of animation in another object. As I was showing in the example before, once I click on the red shape, a smiley face will appear on the screen. So let's take a look at it step by step. What you need to do to create trigger animation is first of all to create an object or shape on the screen that will be animated. Then you have to create something that will serve as a trigger. Then you would select animation for the object that will be animated and you assign the second object as a trigger. Now what objects can be animated? Lines of text or words, text boxes, images, shapes, audio and video. So anything that you can make appear or disappear on click or add some kind of an emphasis can serve as the animated object. Now what objects can be triggers? If we look at our previous list, you will see that only text boxes, pictures and shapes can serve as triggers for animations in other objects. So now let's take a look at this example that I have shown before. I have two objects on my screen, the red oval shape and the smiley face. Now this object will be animated and this one will serve as a trigger. So first of all, I will need to animate this object. I go to the animations tab. Here I find the effect that I want to use and in this case it will be bounce. So for that animation to happen, now I need to have a trigger. I select my animated object and I either go to the animations tab trigger button and select the oval or I can open the animation pane and I can right click on the highlighted object or I can click on this uh, drop down menu below and select timing, triggers, start effect on the click off. So right now you see that this animation also has this little lightning, lightning symbol. It means that this animation has some kind of a trigger. And in the animation pane you can see that you have all the information that this particular animation has this particular trigger. Let's see how it works. I click anywhere on the screen, nothing happens. I click on the red oval and here comes my smiley face. Now let's take a look at another example. So here you have a simple quiz, multiple choice quiz, and you have the question, what's the most recent version of PowerPoint, and you need to select a response. Let's say I've selected the wrong response and I have negative feedback, and finally I have my correct response and I have positive feedback. So this is a very simple way to create multiple choice um, questions for your students. And here we have the previous example where I had three buttons and three pictures. So I have quite a lot of objects on the screen. For that, when you work, when you work with multiple objects, remember to use the selection pane. And you can find it under Home, Select, Selection Pane. And you can see that I have already renamed all my images to know exactly what image that was and also all these shapes I have renamed to know that uh, this particular shape is the show me kitten button. Now that I'm ready to use animations I will first highlight the image that I want to animate. I go to animation tab and I uh, select an animation and then I assign the trigger. So here it will be show puppy. Kitten I add, go to the Animations tab, I add the animation, and I assign the trigger. And here I have both a kitten and a puppy, so I do exactly the same thing. So right now, if I play this, if I say show me kitten, here are kittens, show me both, a kitten and a puppy, and there is a puppy.
but you can see they also stay on the screen. Maybe I want the pictures to disappear after I show them. In this case, I can assign the same button as a trigger for disappearing. So I highlight the picture that I want the, want the animation. And you see that we already have some kind of an animation here. And if we go to animation pane, you see that we do have animation and a trigger for this picture already. But we always can add animation to objects. But to do that, we go to add animation. We select the animation. In this case, it will be just disappear. And again, you select the trigger for it. So you will see my puppy will appear when I click on this button and it will also disappear when I click on this button. Let's see how it works. The picture appears, the picture disappears. You can repeat it with all other pictures to have the same effect. Now if we brainstorm for different learning activities with type 1 anim trigger animation, uh, the simplest one, of course, is you click on one, let's say, picture, another one appears or disappears. Um, or you can click on the word and the translation or the audio or video or related picture appears. You can also have uh, tasks like you have various categories and you have items in each category that can appear when this particular category is clicked. So students can browse only the categories that are of interest to them. Um, you can also be playful and have something like dialogue lines that click um, uh, that you click to play audio. So I'm gonna just show this example with audio real quick. So here I have two people talking and I have bubbles for each of them that I can click to hear the audio. Hi Emily, where are you going? Hi Mike. I'm going to the park. What will you do there? I will play Frisbee with Erica. Now, if we look what's going on here, I have audio added to 1, 2, 3, 4, but not for 5 and 6 yet. We'll do it together. Um, but basically, when I click on any of the bubble, that triggers an audio to play. And I already have audio files um, on my computer. And if I go to Insert, Audio, and then audio on my PC, or you can also record your own audio by using this button. That will work exactly the same way. But for this exercise, I already have the file. So I will click the audio on my PC, and I select five, and I will insert an audio file that will be connected to this bubble. Now, first, I need to assign the animation. And in this case, I'm assigning animation to an audio file. And I go to animations and you will see that changes to play, pause and stop. Although you can also have all other animations such as entrance and appear. So I wanted to the animation to be to start playing. May I come with? And I want the trigger to be on the click of dial box 5. And you see I have all these um, dial box 5 and dial 1. These what I have previously assigned in the selection pane. So when you have multiple objects on the screen, always rename them in the selection pane. So I have selected that. So you can see that um, I have this appear here. So the audio file uh, dialog 5 line will play when the dialog 5 box is clicked. Now you see all the other ones have two animations, play and stop. So which is good if you know if you have a longer audio file, students can click it to stop. So I will add the animation of stop and assign the same trigger. Now let's see what happens here. If I click on the box five, may I come with the audio starts playing, but I also still have this audio icon on the screen. To remove that, simply click on it. To remove that, simply go to Audio Tools Playback and click on Hide During Show. After that, you can leave it anywhere on the screen um, for you to know where it is, um, but it will disappear when the show is on. And I will quickly add the audio file for this one. So I will go again, Insert, Audio from my PC, Dialog Line 6, 
and it's right here. I will hide it during show right away. So you can see it already appeared in the animation pane and the trigger is dial 6, which is the audio file, meaning if I click on the audio file, it will play. I still need to add the trigger, which is box 6. And then I also need to add animation of stopping, stop, trigger, same thing, dial 6 box. So let's see how it works. May I come with? Sure. It will be fun. All right. It all works. So in this tutorial, we have covered trigger animation of type 1 when you click on something and something else gets animated. And in the next tutorial, we will learn about the next type of trigger animation when you click on something and that triggers animation within the same object. Thank you very much.